In this mini lecture, we will continue with the lateral directional stability derivative, and we will be looking at CL beta, the rolling moment change due to side slip. There will be two contributions to CL beta, and the first one is a wind dihedral contribution. Now let's see how can we um, derive the wind contribution to the CL beta. Okay, so now what we see is an aircraft. We've seen this aircraft several times, and it's a top view of it. And so it's a flying straight upwards, and relatively, and uh, the wind is blowing towards the aircraft with a speed V, which is a true air speed. Now what happens is there will be a side slip, side slip velocity. Okay, so then in total, there will be a wind relatively blowing from the right side of the aircraft nose, and which uh, is the corresponds to the um, positive side slip, and the side slip angle is beta, is the all indicated. Okay, and since we're looking at the wind dihedral in the top view, we won't see that, so we need to have the rear view. In this way, we can see the dihedral angle, gamma, and it's notified the uh, capital gamma. Okay, so now we have the side slip velocity, positive side slip velocity, and we can decompose this small v side slip velocity into a two components. One component is parallel to the wing, the other is vertical to the wing. And the vertical component is V times sine gamma. Now we have the um, dihedral angle being used. Okay. And now I would like to, you to look at this small section dy incremental section and so further on we will have a side view of this incremental wing section and remember it's a side view and what happens now is originally So originally we have this uh, horizontal velocity v because of the wind dihedral angle and there is a small vertical component. This makes the total velocity uh, moving towards the top left. So there will be a small angle of attack alpha produced due to the wind dihedral. Okay, Bec then because of this small angle of attack, there will be induced lift produced on that wing section. Okay, so we've already done this several times. We know alpha can be uh, derived as V sine gamma divided by V, and originally it's sine alpha equals V times sine gamma divided by V because we assume. Uh, small velocity v, size slip velocity v is small, and then the angle alpha is also very small. Then we can just uh, assume alpha equals v times sine gamma divided by v. And usually we, uh, the wind dihedral angle is also small, so sine gamma is roughly gamma. So we have alpha equals v times gamma divided by big V. Okay, so then we can have the induced lift. So the lift in that incremental section, we have a times alpha times half rho v square c times dy. And uh, you probably already know this small a is the CL curve slope for that wing section or for the wing. And then we can have the incremental lift. Okay, so this is we uh, the D lift is analyzed through the right side wing. What happens to the left wing? This is a question for you. 
we've just derived the induced lift on that incremental section. Now what we can do is we further um, calculate the in the rolling moment contributed from that small section so that dl is minus d lift times y so y is a moment arm because that, that incremental section is located at uh, y so the question is why we get negative sign negative sign and now i invite you to take out your right hand and then you can notice the moment contributed from that induced lift is actually pointing to the rear of the aircraft. So it's negative moment. That's why we get a negative sign over there. Okay, so we just plug in the lift. We will have this relation. And in order to get the total moment, rolling moment, we can do the integration from negative half B to positive half B. And then we do tidy it up, take the uh, constant part out of the and um, out of the integration so we have this expression and since we are looking at the derivative of l beta or lv so we just do the de uh, derivative partial derivative so partial l partial v and we can just take the v out from eliminate the v from l so we get this expression and now we notice i highlighted the uh, integration part actually it's not that straightforward to uh, in looking and then usually people want to express it in another way so lv is half uh, minus half a rho v gamma s y beta so why is that and you can compare with the integration okay so c times dy if we see c times dy and then we do the integration is actually the area and then since we are integrating y from left to right so we use the uh, y bar to integrate uh, to as uh, as integration integrated y okay so uh, this is a simplified expression for lv and now we can find the denominator and just uh, calculate cl beta or clv um, from the wing dihedral contribution and the denominator for non-dimensionalization is half rho vsb and eventually we have minus a gamma y bar divided by b okay so this expression bracket uh, expression is for the wing dihedral contribution to cl beta so now now let's see the wing sweep contribution to cl beta and again, we have the top view of this aircraft, but now we are zooming in on the right wing. And relatively, there is a wind blowing strictly towards the aircraft nose direction. Okay. And so because apparently we have a swept wing and the swept angle is determined by the uh, connection or connections of the quarter chord connections with respect to the uh, lateral direction so we have the uh, wind sweep angle lambda capital lambda okay and now let's do the analysis since we have the wind swept angle and we can decompose this big v to esb into two components one component is uh, the component perpendicular to the wing leading edge which is v uh, cosine lambda so we have um, we are looking at this um, velocity components okay and usually we are if it's a rectangular wing or street wing we are looking at this uh, blue section which is uh, um, in line with true uh, speed v but now since we are using a swept wing and we, we are essentially looking at a wing section perpendicular to the leading edge which follows the uh, direction of v cosine lambda okay so now let's do the comparison of the um, blue section and the green section so now let's have a side view for each com uh, each incremental section so for the blue section we ha originally have uh, an angle of attack alpha and 
then alpha is uh, uh, equals small w divided by big V. Okay. If we look at the um, green section, and not, since we don't have any change in the vertical speed, and now the component v cosine alpha is smaller than v, so in practice, essentially, and the angle of attack alpha prime is larger than alpha, and alpha prime is uh, w divided by v cosine alpha or cosine lambda. Okay, so alpha prime eventually becomes alpha divided by cosine lambda. So it's larger than the uh, original angle of attack. So which means there will be induced lift. The lift becomes larger to the only um, green incremental section. Okay, so this is uh, induced lift on the green section. So it's A, again, it's the um, slope of the lift coefficient curve, and then times the angle of attack, alpha divided by cosine lambda, and then times its area, half row is square times um, C cosine lambda, because we are looking at the chord of the effective chord of the green section. So it's not C, but C cosine lambda, right? Because it's smaller than the green section and then times dy, dy is incremental section. Okay. And so far you may notice there is no, we haven't used information of the side slip. And if we have assumed we are now having a positive side slip, which means the aircraft will turn towards the left side, then we have a positive light, uh, side slip. In, in this case, the connection of the a quarter cord will be moving slightly upward and then the effective angle effective swept angle will be lambda minus beta in that case the cord will be even smaller so what happens is the cord will become c times cosine lambda minus beta so that's the effective cord during a side slip, okay? So it's this D lift prime essentially under the effect of the positive side slip. And so we have the lift, it's pointing out of the screen, and then we can do the calculate the, the, the rolling moment, okay? So DL is the incremental rolling moment. Again, we have a negative sign before uh, the multiplication, the lift uh, prime times y, because again, if we use our right hand, si right, si right hand, and it will be a negative rolling moment, and uh, we just plug in the d lift prime, and then we get this num uh, this expression. Okay, so now, so we've derived the contribution, rolling moment contribution from that incremental section. And it's a bit mass. The following steps will be a bit mathematical. And now, what we do is we're looking at cosine lambda uh, minus beta, and we just expand that. And um, because again, we are using assume beta is a small angle, small angle assumption, and then sine beta is roughly beta, and the cosine beta is one. So eventually, cosine lambda minus beta equals cosine lambda plus beta sine lambda. And since uh, all the derivations in order to derive CL beta, we are actually looking at the um, changes in any uh, rolling moment. So cosine lambda is actually a constant. So in a derivation, we are just looking at the um, increment uh, in different part. So that's why we will just uh, include the t beta times sine lambda. Essentially, if we d when we do the uh, derivative later, partial derivative, um, partial L, partial um, beta, this cosine lambda will essentially be zero, right? So in this step, we are making it easier, slightly more straightforward. 
So we're just taking taking into account beta times sine lambda. Okay. Now we just do the integration of the L, and so it's a bit long expression, and so I'm not reading the procedure, but eventually L equals minus half rho v square a alpha, and uh, we know sine lambda divided by cosine lambda is actually tangent lambda, and then times v divided by I, v times s y bar. So we have the L, and then we do the partial derivative L v, and then we have the, the v from L is eliminated, and again we just use the same denominator. We can get C L beta is so the expression now is much more straightforward minus C L times tangent of lambda times y bar divided by b. Okay, so we now so far uh, derived the two contributions. Okay, for C L beta and uh, one part is contributed by wind dihedral, the other part is uh, contributed by wind sweep. And we can notice it's negative. So in side slip, a positive side slip angle will produce a negative um, rolling moment change. And we should notice both components are usually of similar magnitudes in practice. So this is the end of uh, the present derivation for CL beta.